Welcome to another edition of Turf Talk Breeders' Cup pre-entry day edition. Fans, we won't actually know who pre-entered until Wednesday when they're released, but the checks were due today. Horsemen making some decisions. Uh, they get multiple choice for now. They have to narrow it down on Friday. When you first open that PDF with all the PPs of the pre-entrance, what do you look for to help your process of narrowing down going into next week? Well, I just kind of look at the races, kind of get a general overview of uh, who's running where. Uh, I also kind of like to ma mentally map out the type of wagers I might be interested in uh, pursuing. And another thing I like to look at, especially in the grass races, kind of uh, refresh my memory a little bit on, on the foreign invaders coming over from Europe. I, following American racing and European racing simultaneously kinds to, tends to get yourself in a bit of a cloud. You, you can't keep track of everybody. Uh, this gives you an opportunity to kind of refresh your memory, uh, see where these horses have come from, what they've won, who they've lost to, so on and so forth, and just kind of get myself mentally prepared for the Breeders' Cup. That's uh, what I like to do about a week in advance. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, to me, this is sort of that between time, and re refresh is a good word for it. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm not ready to look at all these races, especially with, you know, 16 or 18 horses that might go to a different race and say, oh, I need to handicap it and come up with a winner. I wait for the finals for that. But at this point, you mentioned sort of wagering strategy. We have some really good info in the handicapping package, looking back all the way to 06 of the multi-race wagers and what those have paid. And for me, since that's the kind of bets I like to make, uh, I'm definitely sort of in that mode of, you know, where my singles might be, where I might want to spread, that type of thing. But yeah, as far as final decisions go, I mean, I see a lot of chatter about people liking to do their handicapping with the pre-entrance. I just need to wait, and a big part of that is posts and horsemen and jockey assignments and things like that. Uh, we talked about what comes out Wednesday. Final PPs will be out Monday, a week from today. Uh, what do you look for when those finally are out? And hey, these are the this is the Breeders' Cup. Well, definitely you look at post position. Uh, some horses are going to get stranded on the far outside, which you don't want, especially maybe in the one turn races. And also, we'll have a better idea of knowing what the upcoming weather is going to be on mm. Breeders' Cup uh, sat Friday and Saturday. Uh, obviously, you're going to be looking at horses who can thrive in the mud and, the, and soft going on the turf if the weather looks unfavorable. Uh, otherwise, by the time the final entries come about, everybody will have the, had their final workouts pretty much. You can kind of assess the workout patterns of a lot of these horses uh, to see who do you, who you kind of think is coming into the races in, in their very best condition. All right, yeah, I didn't uh, tell you to say it, but all those things we're going to have very in-depth on brisnet.com. Uh, certainly throughout Breeders' Cup week, the workout reports you mentioned uh, earlier, you mentioned the international stuff. I'm sure you and Kelly Riley have some pretty keen insights on all the invaders coming over, and all of that stuff will be available and is now in part at brisnet.com slash bc. So definitely check out that website and check us out next week. We'll know uh, the fields, I guess not the Distaff or Classic at this time next week. We'll have to touch on those Tuesday, uh, but certainly we'll have our first look at the actual fields and hopefully a couple winners. Yeah, we're at this upcoming weekend is a good time to start uh, looking at the races and kind of going through them, eliminating horses you pretty much know don't have the sufficient class or the good enough form going into it and that are kind of safe eliminations, so to speak. And so uh, should have your uh, you know top five, six contenders in each race pretty much narrowed down by the time the final entries come in. Yep, agreed. And then those final entries you could use to get it down even further. And I'm a big proponent you don't need a top pick every race. I mean, you do because you want to be right. But in terms of betting, I mean, this nonsense like, oh, this is my pick and I have to bet it and only that horse, I don't buy it. And certainly a Breeders' Cup, you want to sp you want to spread where you think it's yeah. appropriate. And if you have a strong opinion, then don't. Yeah, these races are generally just way too tough oftentimes to just single on one horse or two horses, especially in the multi-race wagers. You really need to go deep into some of these uh, I'm thinking of races like the Juvenile Turf, Juvenile Phillies Turf, where pretty much you could count on eight or nine horses being competitive in. And, you know, it, there are certainly going to be races over the weekend where you can single on you know, one or two favorites or possibly, but uh, otherwise, yeah, you've got to bring your 
wallet to the races on Breeders' Cup days. No question. Wallet or at least uh, use easy money to deposit in your Twinspires.com account. And on Twinspires.com slash blog, we'll touch on a lot of these topics, most likely winners, uh, long shots to key on, vulnerable favorites. We'll cover all that. And again, handicapping information is at brisnet.com slash bc. And we'll be back next week to talk actual Breeders' Cup fields. Looking forward to it. See you then. All right.